she grabbed his hand, took it off of her head, said, no, that's not what I want you to pray. He said, well, I'm sorry, but that's the only condition in which you'll never have any more trouble. That's the only way you're not going to, that's the only way your prayer can be answered. And there's a truth there, that uh, when we all get to heaven, in, as Janet said, in the sweet by and by, and that's not to diminish that. I'm glad for that. I'm happy that there is heaven, and I'm glad about that. And, and I'm thankful, and I'm glad to be able to tell you there won't be any pressure in heaven, and there won't be any trouble in heaven. But as much as we uh, love the idea of heaven, the, the, the reality is uh, he doesn't want you there right now. <laughs> he wants you here. Believe me, if God wants you in heaven right now, he's got ways of getting you there. You understand? <laughs> Lots of different ways. There's all kinds of ways that we can be in heaven. And I tell you this, uh, that you don't want to be there, honestly, as bad as you think you might want to be. Uh, because, uh, of course, people always talk about how much they want to go to heaven, but... Uh, as soon as something comes along, some, let's say, life-threatening illness, people will tend to spend every penny they have to keep from going there. <laughs> and you know that's true, don't you? Now, see, we know instinctively that we're supposed to be here right now. Now, thank God there is there, and there won't be any trouble, any pressure there. But here's the reality. As long as we're here in this world, in these physical bodies, there will be pressure. There will be trouble. There will be problem, things we have to face or deal with that we'd rather not face and deal with. It would be great if everybody treated us nice. It would be great if everybody said good things about us all the time. It would be great if there was never any friction between people. It would be great if there were never any accidents or problems or, or difficulties of any kind. But there will be, and there's the potential of all those things, as long as you're here in a physical world, in a physical body. Now that's the bad news, if you want to call that bad news. And Jesus said it this way, in these very succinct words. He said, in the world... That's this physical world. He says, in the world you shall have tribulation. No way around that. He said, in the world. But you notice in this verse, he doesn't just say, in the world you'll have trouble, so just buck up. He tells us two things that we are in simultaneously. You notice he says we're in the world. If you back up, he says, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Or to paraphrase, that you might understand that in me you have peace. So simultaneously, we are in the world, but we're also in Him. Now, when it says in Him, don't think about it like uh, spatially, like, like you might think of a bucket, and you throw a marble into the bucket, and now the marble's in the bucket. It doesn't mean it that way. He doesn't mean inside of Him. When He uses this expression, in me, He means it this way, in union with me, or in connection to me, in your relationship with me. Because we are, as Christians, in a relationship with Him, or in a union. I like to make the analogy or compare it to uh, like a marriage. A marriage is a, a union between a man and a woman, a physical union. Uh, uh, you know, I've been to a lot of marriages, and I'm sure you have too. Uh, the man and the woman come into the church as separate individuals, and then there's a ceremony. And what happens in the ceremony is basically some words are said. Isn't that right? That's what it amounts to. Some words are said. And basically the words amount to this. The man says to the woman, I take you. And the woman says to the man, I take you. Did I say it right? The man says to the woman, yeah. They both say to each other, I take you. They, they receive one another or they take one another. Uh, and then they enter into, and the, the minister blesses it. And he says, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. You've been there. You've, um, uh, you know what that's like. And then they walk out of there. Uh, a married couple, a union. They've entered into a union. In very much the same way, we enter into a union with Jesus when we become Christians, when we put our faith in Him, when we trust in Him as Christians. But the truth of the matter is, as I said before, He's already entered into, He already started it. He already entered into a union with us on the cross. When He took our fallen condition, He married us, we might say, when we were unlovely, when we were not at our best. That's when He entered into a union with us on the cross. And not just us, but everyone in the whole world. When we hear the gospel and believe in it, that's when we enter into it with Him. That's when we accept it and uh, take our part. He's already taken us. And when we hear the gospel and believe it, we take Him. And then a union is complete. And we call that, being a Christian, we call that in Bible language, being in union with Him or in Him. So Jesus here says, He means by faith, He says, I've said these things to you that you might have peace. So in me. That in me you might have peace. Or, say it another way, in this union with me, in your spiritual union with me, you might have peace. In the world you'll have trouble. 
but in me you have peace. You notice that those things are simultaneous and exist at the same time. Then he tells us the reason why. He says, be of good cheer. <laughs> now most of the time when somebody comes up to you, especially when there's trouble or you're going through something and says, just cheer up, <laughs> what you want to do is punch him in the nose. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you cheer up. <laughs> you cheer up now. No. That because it's irritating. You know why that's irritating when people say that to you is because, as we rightly say sometimes, you don't understand what I'm going through. And granted, we don't. We try to help best we can. But see, if you're going through something, I can, there's no way I can fully understand it. But I want to tell you something. Jesus fully understands what we go through. He knows what we're going through. And as we read in Isaiah, it's not just that he stands back at a distance and says, oh, I feel sorry for you and I have sympathy for you. He says, I'm with you. Remember that? When you pass through the fire, I'll be with you. You'll not be burned. I'm, I'm with, he understands the things that we go through. So he says, in the light of this trouble that we have in the world, he says, be of good cheer. Or in other words, cheer up. <laughs> now that's not me telling you that, so don't come and be mad at me. He is saying, cheer up. Well, what have, what have I got to cheer up about? Well, I'm in a union with him. And here's what he says. Cheer up because I have overcome the world. That's another way of saying, whatever it is you're facing, it's part of this world. The trouble you have is part of this world. And he says that I'm bigger than this world. <laughs> That's good news. Anton, would you give me the Amplified Translation? I like what it says. I just was reading this last night, and I like what it said. Luckily, we have the Amplified Translation. Oh, look at all those words. I don't know if I want to read all this or not. Uh, I have told you these things so that in me you might have perfect peace and confidence. That is to say, in our union with him. In the world, you will have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. No, I don't want to hear any of that. <laughs> don't tell me that, but that's true. We're, we have the potential, all those kinds of things. We just talked about that. But he says, be of good cheer or take courage. Be confident, certain, and undaunted. See, right in the face of all the tribulation, trials, distress, and frustrations, he says, be confident. Have some, because, well, think about it. How can you have confidence in the face of trouble and frustration? You have to lift up your eyes a little higher and think about something other than the trouble. For I have overcome the world. Listen to this. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Now to me, that sounds a lot like what we read in Isaiah when he says, when you pass through the fire, you'll, you'll not be burned. When you go through the water, it will not overflow you. He says, I have deprived it of power to harm you. So, what do we do when we face trouble and frustration and trials? Well, what we should do is, see, what we tend to do is to focus our attention on the trouble, the trials, and the frustration. But what he's advising us to do is to contemplate or to think instead about the one who's bigger than our trials, trouble, and frustration. Think about the one who says, you are in a union with me, and I have deprived the world of any power to harm you. Focus your attention on me. Now, before we talk about more fully about what we do with it, I want to show you that Paul... And it has the same attitude. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I guarantee you, if you read about the life of this man Paul, you'll find out he went through some problems. He faced more problems than you and I could even imagine. And I want to begin reading with verse, so oh, I think, uh, 8. He says, he says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Well, how could he say that? Well, he's got the attitude that Jesus was talking about, as we're going to see. He says, we're trouble on every side, and I'm going to add in, I'm going to paraphrase here, but we're not looking at the trouble. We're looking at the one who's bigger than the trouble. So he says, we're trouble on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. You know, sometimes as Christians, we think, this thought enters into our minds, uh, if I'm troubled on every side, I must have done something wrong. What did I do to cause this to happen? Sometimes preachers are the worst ones about that. You opened a door somewhere. Now, I don't think, you know, I don't believe that. I don't ever tell anybody that. I don't say, you, what, you know, if you'd, if you'd just done everything right, none of this would have happened. You can do everything right, and things can still happen. Here's the Apostle Paul. I think we can be pretty much assured that he did most things, you know, pretty well. Yet he had, what did he say? Troubled on every side. See, if you're troubled on every side, don't think you've done something wrong. Uh, you should think to yourself, yes, but I've got somebody that's bigger than my trouble, who loves me and who's on my side. We are perplexed. See, sometimes we are. Sometimes we, Perplexed means you don't know what to do. Have you ever felt like that? I have, lots of times. 
But he says...